In this video, we're going to have a look at how to find the area enclosed within a polar curve. Now, in the past, when we've integrated between limits, we've looked at the area between a curve and the axis. So, for example, when we integrate with respect to x, we find this area here, the area enclosed between the curve and the x-axis. But with polar coordinates, this isn't the case. With polar coordinates, we integrate with respect to theta. So actually, what we'll find is the area enclosed between the curve and two angles. For example, if we were to integrate between theta equals zero, which is this line here, and theta equals pi over four, which is this line here, we'd find the area enclosed between those two lines and the curve. So the area we'd find is this one here, If we were to integrate between pi over 4 and 3 quarters pi, then what we'll be finding is the area enclosed between the curve and those two lines. So we'll be finding this area here. So that's the slightly different thing about integrating polar equations. Now, the other thing you've got to remember when asked to find the area enclosed between two lines in a polar curve is to always look at the formula booklet. The formula booklet has everything you need on this, and that's what's given in the formula booklet. So it tells you exactly how to find the area of the sector where the two limits are the lines defined by the two angles between which you want to find the area. So let's do an example question. So the question says, a curve has polar equation r equals one plus cos of three theta, where theta can be anywhere between minus pi and pi. Find the exact value of the area of the region enclosed by the curve between pi equals, uh, between theta equals minus a third pi and theta equals a third pi. So the key here is using this formula. So we're going to integrate a half r squared with respect to theta between the two limits. So let's go for that. So we've got a equals a half, the integral between the two limits. So pi over three and minus pi over three of r squared. So one plus cos of three theta, all squared, d theta, I'm going to have to multiply the bracket out to be able to integrate that. So it equals a half the integral between pi over 3 and minus pi over 3 of 1 plus 2 cos of 3 theta plus cos squared of 3 theta d theta. Now I think the sensible thing to do is to break this up into two separate parts. We've got this part here which is easy to integrate, and this part here, which is slightly harder to integrate. So let's go for part A first. So part A is half the integral between pi over three and minus pi over three of one plus two cos of three theta d theta equals a half of integrate one, we get theta, and integrate 2 cos 3 theta, we get 2 thirds of sine 3 theta, all between pi over 3 and minus pi over 3. And good exam technique now. Two big empty brackets, separate by subtraction, and actually show the act of subbing in the limits. And remember, we're going to multiply all of this by one half. So equals, sub in pi over 3, so pi over 3 plus 2 thirds sine of 3 pi over 3. Take minus pi over 3 plus 2 thirds of sine 3 lots of minus pi over 3. So sine of 3 pi over 3, i.e. sine of pi, 0. Likewise here, 0. 
So that ends up equaling a half of pi over 3 minus minus pi over 3. So plus pi over 3 equals just pi over 3. So that's that part done. Part B relies on expanding double angle formulae. So if we're integrating between pi over 3 and minus pi over 3 cos squared of 3 theta with respect to theta and don't forget the half at the front. What we need to do is expand cos of 6 theta and you need to know your trig identities that's 2 cos squared 3 theta minus 1. So that implies that if we divide by 2 a half cos of 6 theta equals cos squared 3 theta minus 1 half which in turn implies that uh, if we rearrange that to say cos squared 3 theta equals we get cos squared of 3 theta equals a half plus a half cos of 6 theta so now we've got something we can't integrate here and we can replace it with something identical that we can integrate. So that now becomes a half the integral between pi over 3 and minus pi over 3 of 1 half plus 1 half cos of 6 theta d theta equals a half and integrating that we get a half theta plus 1 twelfth sine of 6 theta between pi over 3 and minus pi over 3 and then subbing in the limits becomes a half pi over 3 plus a twelfth sine of 6 pi over 3 take a half of minus pi over 3 plus a twelfth sine of 6 lots of minus pi over 3 and again sine of 6 pi over 3 sine of 2 pi 0 and again so that equals one half of pi over six minus minus pi over six, so plus pi over six equals simply pi over six. Therefore, the total area is pi over three plus pi over six, which is a half pi. So again, it really is as simple as that, but just remember to look at the formula booklet and remember that the limits aren't X coordinates anymore. The limits actually refer to lines and the area that you work out is the area trapped between the curve and those two lines. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.